my channel. If you are new, my name is Mary and I'm so happy to have you here for today's video where I'm going to be talking about religion and the law of attraction, law of assumption, law of abundance, whatever you resonate most closely with, that's that's what we're talking about. And I don't think this is a subject that anyone has specifically asked me for, but it's a subject that I, I really truly believe needs to be covered. One, I've had several clients ask me in the past, just like very directly, is LOA evil? And the fact that people are contending with these kind of fears, um, I, I really hate that for them. And if I have clients who are asking me this, chances are there are people who are out there wondering this. Maybe people who grew up in really religious households, discovered LOA later in life, found it working for them, and then they had this little voice of doubt in the back of their head of, oh my gosh, am I gonna go to hell for this? Which is like, no. But, but speaking of hell, I've also had like religious fanatics come into the comment section of some of my videos and tell me just point blank, you are going to hell. Cool, religion of love, got it. So I think this is a very necessary video. Just to go ahead and address the question directly of is LOA evil? The answer is to some people going to very obviously be no. I don't want any judgment for this question though. There are gonna be some people who want to judge, your gut reaction is to judge and be like, that's ridiculous, of course it's not evil. Look at look at all the amazing that we're born manifestors. Why is this evil? But I think it's really important to, to remember that Everyone's background, lived experience, childhood is different from our own. So what may seem very obvious and very natural to us, to other people may be scary. And rather than judging other people for having these fears and concerns, I think it's better to approach our fellow man from a place of understanding, right? So no, LOA is not evil. First of all, regardless of your religious background. So me personally, I grew up, um, it was a weird childhood, but initially a very Christian household. We were in church three times a week, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. And um, then later in life, I, I was like, this is not for me. And I explored all different kinds of religions. I, I read about witchcraft and Wicca. I um, studied Buddhism, Hinduism. I've read the Quran front to back. Like I've done all these things. And my personal belief is that we are all energy. There is a higher power. It's all the same, regardless what you call it. The higher power could be us, all of us, all of our energy combined. I don't know, I don't care, right? But um, that's kind of my point of reference, but because so much of my childhood was spent in church, I tend to default to Christianity when I think about religion, but I want to acknowledge that what I'm about to say applies to all religious backgrounds. LOA is not evil, okay? One, let's look at this logically. Um, for so many of us, what are we manifesting? Like, let's say you're manifesting a new job with a big raise, big bonus, lots of money. What are you planning on doing with that? Sure, maybe there's like a part of you that's like, oh, I'm gonna buy a new bag or get a, get a new house or do, you know. But for a lot of people, it's like, ooh, when I'm working from home, I'm gonna adopt a dog from the shelter. I've had so many, I have, I have a number of my clients who are manifesting owning pets, being in a position to own pets. Um, in my case, I manifested a better paying job and the first thing that I did was go out and take out a loan to help buy my mom a house so that she wouldn't have to live in poverty. There are people that are manifesting relationships either with a specific person or calling forth someone new and those people are manifesting love and commitment and abundance and joy and happily ever after and I've only heard a couple times, so very, very rarely, these are the exceptions, people who are like, I want to manifest this man so I can break his heart like he broke my, no, like for the most part, people are manifesting good things loving and rich and fulfilling things, not only for themselves, but for other people or for animals or for the greater good of, of those. I have, I have had people who are like, I'm manifesting world peace. And that is amazing. Like we, we should all be manifesting these things together. So when you think like, how could that be evil? How could that be evil? And when you think about God, regardless of, of religious background, when you think about God, so many religious texts, Talk about God as this loving, giving, nurturing person, that which is what we are doing. And that dovetails right into my next talking point of, if you look at this 
from you know my background of of growing up and you know going to church with Christianity. Um, in the Bible, it talks about, you know, in the very first book of the Bible, Genesis, it talks about how God created the heavens and the earth and it was good. And he spent seven days and every day he made something different and he saved the best for last. On the very last day, God created mankind. God created, created, what is, what is manifestation? Manifestation is creation. God created mankind and he made mankind in his image in his image. So God, the creator made mankind in his image and it was good. So I truly believe that God, the creator, whatever this higher power is, I don't care who, what, where you call it, create created us. And in doing so gave us the ability to create because we were made in the image of God, the creator. So manifestation comes as natural to us as breathing. How can that be wrong? We are doing, I truly believe that we were put on this planet to learn and grow and experience and to manifest a life that is fulfilling and joyful and, and nurse. Like I truly believe we were put here to manifest these things, to create these things or else he would not have given it. He would not give us this gift of creation to then punish us for like what it doesn't make any freaking sense right so so no i do not think it is evil i think we actually were put here with the intent of us creating lives that are fulfilling and nurturing and happy and joyful for ourselves and for the people and, and places and things that we care about in so many different religious texts i have some clients who are muslim and they've like rattled off a bunch of quotes from i only read the, through the quran once and it was years ago so i don't remember quotes from it but they've rattled off quotes that directly deal with manifestation my background from christianity there's so many quotes in the bible that deal with manifestation the simplest and most easy to remember is ask and ye shall receive not ask and ye shall receive if god wills it but if he doesn't you have to let it go no it's very ask and ye shall receive how much more clear can we get? Like if you guys can think of other like Bible verses, verses from the Quran, uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, whatever, please drop those below. Different denominations of Christianity, like drop them below. I, Cause I know that there's a lot that I'm overlooking, but I'm trying not to have this video just be like me rattling off a bunch of religious quotes from different texts. But there are so many different quotes from religious texts throughout the millennia directly addressing our divine gift, our divine ability of manifestation. It, it's, it literally, we're given instructions on how to do this. And yet we have this fear that it's evil. Why? The reason is because society, and be that society as a whole or our family or our friends or our religion has preconditioned us to think that we must struggle, that life must be a struggle, that things must be hard, that we must be humble, that we must, like my dad, I learned so many wonderful, amazing things from him, but he had this huge chip on his shoulder. We were very poor. And something my dad always hammered and hammered and hammered in is money's the root of all evil. Money's the root of all evil. I'm glad we're poor because money's the root of all evil. Okay. I know I'm going to get to heaven because money's the root of all evil. It was this huge chip on his shoulder. When you think about like, like, let's say heaven from the like Christian perspective, you go to the pearly gates and there's a dude or a dudette or an angel, whatever, they let you in. And everything that I always read about and was told about heaven from a biblical perspective is that it's perfection. The streets are made of gold. The streets are made of gold. The streets aren't made of dirt because we all have to live like paupers up there. The streets are made of gold. Okay. Heaven, which is perfection, which is this amazing, wonderful place that was designed by God for our souls to go to, to live for all eternity in absolute joy and happiness. Heaven has streets that are made of gold. According to the Christian Bible, streets that are made of gold. And we're sitting here thinking that money and wealth and riches is bad. That to manifest a life that's filled with these things is bad. That to manifest a life that is filled with joy and happiness and love and health and abundance is bad. Because society, however you see it, fam friends, family, you know, society as a whole, has us conditioned to think that we must 
suffer, that life must be hard, that we must be poor, that we must be selfless, that we must be all of these things in order to be good. And anything that is the opposite of those things is bad. And I'm here to tell you that that is bullshit. We are here to live a life that is rich and fulfilling and abundant and joyful. That is why we are here and that is why we were given the gift of creation. Additionally, something very important to point out, you do not have to choose between LOA or religion. I, like I said, I have clients, coaching clients who are Muslim. I have coaching clients who are Hindu. I have coaching clients who are Christian, who are in church every single Sunday with their families. What is affirming? What is visualizing? What is scripting? If not prayer, Okay, sure, you know, I'm oversimplifying it a little bit, but truly it is putting out our intention into the universe so it can manifest back. Asking ye shall receive. Maybe it's a different approach because like when I was growing up, my parents taught me, get on your knees and put your hands and you pray and you ask for the thing. But if you don't get the thing, that's not God's will. Okay, LOA is obviously a little bit different than that, but you do not have to choose. Let me tell you guys something, and this may shock people. Like I mentioned this to my husband a year or two ago, and I guess he just never knew that this was still a part of me. Um, I still pray. I do not align with one particular religion. I, like I said, I've read them all. I've studied them all. I kind of pick different little parts and I go, this is what I believe. And that's what works for me. But I still pray every night before I go to sleep, I close my eyes and I pray what I pray for. Very personal. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you guys what I pray for, but I pray. Um, and then I say my affirmations or I visualize and I go to sleep, right? You do not have to choose. These are not things that are mutually exclusive. So don't think, well, now that I'm doing this LOA thing, I can't go to church anymore. I can't be Christian. I can't be, you can. You do not have to choose. This is just a part of your spirituality. A part of, of growing up and going through life is evolving. We are, we are, we grow in layers. So this is just a new layer, a new layer of depth to who you are as a person and what you believe and what you're capable of. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Like I said, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I know this can be a very contentious topic. So drop your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, if you have requests for future videos about this topic or any other, drop those in the comments as well. You guys know I'm always happy to take requests. Um, and let me know what you thought of the video. Like, was this helpful for you? Was this surprising? Was it you know, like interesting topic? I'm happy to be talking about it. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.